Now, whether we know what that is, it's up to them. Personally, we, I haven't seen much clink, so it's hard to say, so we would have to go purely off of theory craft. Well, like what, Slaughter? Cross the phase, you know? I, I think Axe. I will, Axe will have a hard laning phase, but if, he, if Axe ever catches out clink, that's really annoying. However, they do have Vanish, so never mind. I think it's, it's better if they just focus on the laning phase, so it definitely needs to be hero that's not melee, because if you're melee hero, you'll just get run down very easily by the arrow, searing arrows. And if it is melee, then it should be able to fight back somehow, like with a stun. Without seeing that many heroes, like a, a Sand King could have been pretty good, but that is out of the pool. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely not Urshaker offlane at this point. That's not an option. He will just get completely crushed. The other option they have is potentially Aggro Trilane, but you know how I feel about that. Not, amaz not amazing. They could put the Luna up there. Luna, they could put Luna plus one support up there. Luna will have a pretty easy time trading with Clinks and farming but it's a really compromising position, so I don't like that either. We will just have to see what they think. They're going to have to take a lot of time. It's not a very common hero. Team LC is still on the board. That's that comfort hero for Jonas and Fan. It's not uh, Dragon, Dragon Knight. That's a, that's a DK mid, for sure, which is mm -hmm. okay because Final Tribe has to show anyway. So whatever they're going to pick, it's going to be weird, I feel like. Whatever offline they pick is not going to get banned. And the DK, they feel like it's just... It's just a safe choice for them. It worked in the first game, but, you know, I think it is... They should be able to counter it harder this time and not just pick a Invoker into it or have Invoker matchup because it's that's very good for DK, so maybe something a little bit more oppressive. I want to just look at the list and see what I think could crush the clinks because th this is going to be really, really important. See if they can punish that. I know Jonas... Jonas does have history playing Enigma. As a hero. Well, Enigma into Venge is very sketchy. You will never get hold That's of. That's true. The and yeah, it's yeah, it's not the best team against. This Venge pick helps Clinks out so much. It Clinks is one of those heroes where the second he gets caught out, that's when he's done. So that's where a hero like Axe would just destroy him or like a Legion. But because of the fact that they have <laughs> they do have Venge, it's just like it's really nice. Oh, they pick God, Necro, that was. Right? Yeah, that was like snap. The puck ban, and then they snapped Spectre ban, and then picked Necrophosa. Interesting. Necro, well, the thing about Clinks too is that he can go mid as well. And he can even mid into DK pretty fine. So, like, that's the interesting thing about it is he's very flexible. Be oh my god, is the Skyrath mid? Is that a wow. mid one, Skyrath? It yeah. is. I, I, what a response. I'm curious to see what build he goes for, because, like, I've seen. I bring up Topson a lot because he just plays all these weird heroes. He he goes like, like five null talismans and treads. It, like he just <laughs> okay. goes insane on that intelligence. And I've seen him stomp a lot of games. It's really scary. But I know that most people just go with the Atos and Aghanims, which overall mm. it's it's quite good. I think it works well for their lineup because they do have all the physical damage they need to end the game and take the objectives. They need a bit more balanced damage type. So Skyrath does so much magic damage, and it's going to help them a lot versus this Necrolite. However, yeah, we didn't talk about the Necrolite. The Necro can be quite good against the Clinks. We said that it should be ranged, and it should... It, the Ghost Shroud pretty much protects him against the Searing Arrow, so he's always going to be able to heal back up if he needs to. So it, it could be pretty interesting, but I do feel like the Clinks will get all the CS he wants in this lane. And Earthshaker is not the best, like laning support. He, can, he will just block the wave and give him a l little bit of experience. Skyrath final pick, though, and I'm kind of thinking it, it does seem like a really strong one in the sense that either that Necro or Dragonite being mid, if Skyrath would probably you know be set up to do decent there. Um, they're pretty good in general against those kind of heroes, you know, where obviously the Gross Shroud isn't as effective then for Necrophos, and DK with his passive is not as you know, effective, the same word there. Uh, the Ancient Seal Silence. It's not the greatest this game. That was the one thing to me that's... I guess it's great against Necrophos, but Luna and Dragon, I don't care that much. So it's kind of a mix feeling for me for the Skyrath yeah, that's pick. All, that's all post-BKB. Before BKB, it's it's pretty effective. Like if I get a little bit of lockdown DK, like one magic missile with the Ancient Seal, it's going to do a ton of damage. That's that's what exactly what they need. They were, they were a little bit lacking for damage on the secret side, so... I do like the pick. It just there's a lot of question marks because we don't see these heroes very often in competitive play, especially on the core positions like the clinks. Um, I for TFT, 
I feel like they picked a much weaker support duo this time. And for me, like if seeing that Venge in the in the beginning, I feel like there there might have been a better option than a Shaker, but they did lack disable initiation, so that's probably what they were thinking about. Like if, if Necro had a better laning support and Earthshaker, then I would feel that it could be pretty go. strong. But because it's Earthshaker, it's gonna really come down to you know how this matchup just plays out, just one v one, because it's gonna be Necro versus the Clinks and with plus Avenge. The Earthshaker won't really have that much of an impact besides saving him. Pablo got down here very quickly and got a, a great ward down. He spotted all three heroes of Secret down there as well. So some early information now. Mid one, he's going to help Bully out for the, the bounty rune down here. Top lane, Fata, he's also doing some bowling against Frost, but Frost is able to pick it up first. Hanskin, though, he's taking some good damage against the Absor. Got that plus damage from the Astral Spirit and the speed, but I don't think it's going to be enough in the end. He has another spirit, but yeah, with the Shadow Word, too much heal. <laughs> to get through but uh that was it was that a three for one bounty rune or yeah it's gonna be a three for one this bounty rune's still here so in favor of secret nice somebody should pick it up it's kind of it's interesting to note this is something that um, people who play mid a lot should think about they saw that the mid one was at the bounty rune so the dk just instead of blocking the wave and having the wave come into his tower he just let a couple creeps go ahead so that it was even on the mid lane if he did block the creeps the momentum would have pushed towards Skyrath, that would have been really annoying for him, so... N nice decision making. How about Puppy aggressively using the Wave of Terror on the Creep Wave right there, so it looks like they want to push this... at the bottom it's lane? Just the most efficient way to harass. Like, if you throw out Magic Missile, they know for a fact they can just fight back, but... and the, the mana cost is so high. With Wave of Terror, it's just... good damage, minus armor. It's gonna be very effective coming out through master but yeah he, speaking of that i mean Jonas is definitely taking a, a bit of damage but ace is also at half-life himself currently so of course has to be a little bit careful but right now necrophos only with that death pulse at level one at this point but we've got a mid matchup of skywrath mage versus a dragon knight um so like i was saying on paper it does seem like skywrath should have a better time am, am i right yeah. to think that or he, he will like there's nothing it's like with most DK matchups, he, they kind of just straight form, and the DK doesn't really usually win. Last game was kind of an anomaly just because that's a good matchup, but DK will be fine. I, I feel like he's just going to stack up the Magic Stick charges, level up Dragon Blood, and have a Soul Ring, so he will have plenty of regen for this. And if he ever gets low, he will bring out a Salve. That's just, there's not enough mana on Skyrath at the moment to deal with that. But interesting thing about bottom lane is I actually think with the regen coming out from Death Pulse when Necro CS is, and if the Earthshaker is just being really aggressive like if they ever find situations where they can trade a couple right clicks with the fissure on top they're actually going to have a pretty good advantage in this lane so i do like the necro house playing out and then once the hard stopper aura comes out yep it comes out right now that's just a little bit extra damage that keeps building up on the clinks he doesn't have much regen and he doesn't want to buy regen either he wants to be building towards that aquila and the soul ring so right now five tangles is all he got and the, yeah, the that, bench can't really help him I was going to say, that Ghost Shot is going to do really good this game, isn't it, against the, well, at least the Clink. So that goes back to the Skywrath pick, though. It's a nice hybrid idea where there's a lot of physical damage, Skywrath, of course, all magical damage instead. So kind of a give and take there. There it goes. But Jonas a fan. And for those that may just be tuning in, at game number one, we also had a Necrophos, and sure enough, it was in the hands of Team Secret in the offlane, actually, and it was for their victory, so... How about that? We got Necrophos in game three now, too, and on the other team, and TFT trying to make it uh, the series winning hero as a result. Look at Luna. She's just like we we thought with the Drunken Haze. Just It makes oh, it yeah. so hard for her to CS, even, even if she's in range. And then the constant threat of the Elder Titan, there is really good kill potential once the boots do come out in a couple more levels. If they ever get on top of the Warlock, a lot of times he will just Straight up die. Yeah, he is struggling. 8 and 1 right now, 11 and 4. Brewmaster, you see the Shadow Work coming out offensively, trying to help the most they can, but it's like for now, Brewmaster. I have the better time. So far, not many rotations happening. As I say that, though, Elder Titan he is ramping around middle lane. I want to maybe make a play here. Echo Stomp is good to go with the Astral Spirit. But Skyrath also taking some hefty damage, so backing off for the time being. I don't think they saw the other time, just simply having to work out that way. 
Yeah, there's uh, there's no way they will kill DK. <laughs> He's just too sustainable. Yeah. Even even if Skyrath has double no oh, one's bottom. Kill. That's a first blood. Necrophos just blows up with the wave of terror magic missile, and of course Clink's just throwing in searing arrows with a strafe. That that caught Necrophos off guard completely. He did not know Ventral was at the the left there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that Pablo went for the the stout shield taker because a lot of times you'll just spam up the clarities and just forego stout shield because you're not really wanting to right click trade anyway i think a lot of the pressure died down because of the stout shield choice um especially because it doesn't really matter against the ring arrow so he's actually caught in the tower okay he's fine but i feel that if he was constantly upping his mana and using fissure it would be a lot they would be in a lot more um better position just volleying out their spells on ace and just ruining his region because you you can see right now he used all of his region already he's he had six tangles they're all gone spamming fissure out would have been a lot more beneficial especially with the heart stopper or if they weren't planning on using like doing playing aggressively then ghost Rao would have just kept him alive in every scenario yeah no, that's what i was just about to suggest as well thinking about that and yeah he gets a little second point in death pulse but kind of assume that's coming out at level four of course meanwhile pablo way back here he Kind of stunned up. He does have a double damage rune, so it's gonna be clever with that, but in a bad spot, we'll just TP back to base and kick in the regen. Brewmaster, he also had a TP back to base. Gonna come back up top now. So Frost finding himself a bit of farm, and he's now 25 and 5. He really jumped up there. Yeah. Stressing early in this laning phase, it was a struggle, but not so much anymore. Something that I see really good Elder Time players do, which I'm not saying Yeps or isn't, but in the laning phases, what they do is they stack up camps and then they throw their Astral Spirit into several stacked camps, hold into lane and come out with like tons of damage with level two Astral Spirit. That would completely dominate this lane if you wanted to go for that route. So um, not as not as strong as I thought it would be, but still Brewmaster well, really wants mid lane. You see, yeah, what they're doing, they, this is the second time they've tried that now with the other Titan and you just, <laughs> they're not gonna kill him. I mean it, it needs everything we need to connect him I mean, he has an ancient dragon form and I mean Skywrath maybe if he's level six I guess but he wasn't even level six right there either. No, uh, even Mystic if flare. even if he was, th there is no disable for him to stand into it. So yeah. unless magic missile came out from Venge, but there's I think he's just feeling a little lost on a late stage. Yeah. Well he's gonna come back once again. This up is only at half life, yes. so that could be a difference. He does have a wand. He's running it himself, has TP support in from Warlock, auto attack, storming out, breathe fire. Gets a Shadow Word heal, Arky Missile's not gonna be enough damage, auto attacks neither. And the Shadow Word heal will actually give him a lot of a puppy. Puppy in the flank, Magic Missile level two, look at Arrow, he's running back forward though. Yeah, after he sends in the Astral Spirit, can he somehow land an Echo Stop? Arrow's just gonna keep on running, he's just hugging the tower as if he knows that the Vengeful Spirit is maybe nearby. That's Arrow's gonna dog. survive. That was literally the perfect amount of heal coming out. Yeah. Uh oh, well, no Skyrath now. Yeah, Puppy's just not gonna go just yet. If Skyrath regens and TP's in here, right? It's eventual that Invis is gonna wear off in a second, though. See, so, but yeah, you're right. Warlock level two Shadow Word. Clearly, the difference maker at that point. This is He's favoring TFT a lot in the laning stage. They pretty much have control of all three lanes, which is exactly what they want. I think probably top is the lane that is the worst for them but and once brew does hit level six it gets really scary for luna so you know at least basically two and a half lanes at this point still good for them Ooh, bottom lane no reaper scythe means clinks will be able to use that skeleton walk and get out of there but close call look at that tower pressure as well mm -hmm. it, that is extremely significant if they can take that just before any rotations come out the clinks is going to be very scary especially once level six comes out on Necro. Yeah, we already talked about in the game one of this series how that Reaper Scythe, the buff to the ultimate as far as the penalty, even at level one now, 15 seconds added to that respawn time, so you do not want to die to that. Look at this Clink's rotation. He's trying to he's trying to gain mid, but <laughs> they really I, want I'm really mid. not sure he can get that kill. I feel like he has to go top if anything. Let's see. Uh Two points in the level strafe. two dragon blood. He did. He just soul ranked. Breathe fire hit Skyrath though. There's the opening Mystic Flare. Yes, they do have plenty of damage. 
I like that he leveled up straight um, instead of just maxing out Searing Arrow straight up. It, it gets a lot better the more you level it up, whereas Searing Arrows only jumps 10 damage. So it's actually better to level up straight in a lot of situations. So it's, this shows that he actually plays the hero. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> the game three of a super major. Well, sometimes you'd be surprised the amount of pros that like they think there's a cool idea and they just pick yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've definitely seen that. There's been examples of that before. It feels like he's harassing Frost up here at the top lane, but this is you know kind of similar to like a Slark when he gets that Shadow Blade. He'll become a, a, a core hero that really just starts rotating around looking for kills. And with that skeleton walk, of course, he can do it earlier. Um, so is this probably what you'd expect out of the clinch? I said he's moving around now. I think this is the best kills. thing you'd do. The, the fact that he got a mid kill is even better. And the great thing about Clinks is he's just so efficient at taking tower. So it's not it's not wasted time at all. Like he couldn't lane bottom to begin with and he created lots of space. So and he wants to be in this lane to begin with. So the fact that they're trading like this Really, really good for the Clinks. Oh, tier 1 tower is going to trade as mentioned. Top tower, Fata. We'll get last hit credit up there. Bottom lane goes just in favor of the Dire as a whole. Necrophos is level 6 now. So that Reaper's sight threat is there. Warlock almost level 6 himself. And obviously that means chaotic offering. How about Pablo? He's going to choose to go the forest staff first. So we're not going to see the early blink dagger. The prioritizing four staff what do you think it's really good to counterplay into the sky raft and i feel like he wouldn't even get the blink dagger in time so this way he's just building into it very slowly i think arcane boots is pretty necessary or a soul ring but if he wants to go for his four staff it's just gonna be really good against sky raft in general they're not gonna get kills oh earth shaker he did hit clinks in the back of the fissure but man that's scrape on top of the swap no chance to survive Necrophos just has to keep running. He might not be able to run for long, though. But uh, Primal Split is ready. And that doesn't want to go too far. Almost a Blink Dagger on Brewmaster, by the way. Speaking of that item, he's 20 gold away for That's being so, able to purchase so it. Really nice communication. You, you pointed it out. The Clinks did give Fata the last hit on top tower. That speeded up this Blink significantly. And now that they have it, they should carry out a smoke at some point and just try to use the Brew Split on a tower. Probably mid. Are they going to smoke here? No. Nope, if they, they, don't if they force the issue bottom, if TFT forces the issue on bottom into this blink dagger, it could be very bad. This is something, mm -hmm. this is the fight that they want. But we do, actually, we do have Warlock Rock. And that is, it's, it's fairly even, just really depends on who gets the better positioning. Gana Coffering is ready to go, as mentioned. Kaya finished on Skywrath Mage. Not the most popular item in general, but there are a couple of heroes that come to mind. Storm Fear, for example, and... Skyrath definitely another one of those, especially in that core role. Even no boots as well. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Not the most mobile. Oh, did they scan it? I think that scan just hit as they smoked in. It barely hit as it was wearing off. So the Radiant Side Seeker gonna play it very safe. Arrow, Ancient Dragon Forms ready. He'll activate it, go for the tier one push, but you feel that fight coming. Another TP and Brewmaster looks like he's coming. They see him, though. The Fissure does not initially fought to get the blink off. He can't promise split, though. Skywrath Mage taking the Reaper side, not enough for the kill initially. But with the key on the cover, he missed the clip, the Dragon down goes Skywrath Mage. Up in the back of the Spitter. Just go off with a couple of heroes, including the Shaker. He'll get caught by the Magic Missile, most likely gonna end up falling. One more auto attack from Yamster will do the job there. Warlock, he's lifted in the air and brought right back down the Primal Split from Brewmaster. So three for one, they did end up killing the Dragon Knight. As he was trying to flee all the way back here. Who got the DK? That was mid one ended up getting credit for the kill. Wow. wow. That must have been an arcane bolt flying through. He had a pretty high amount of HP. I saw the DK, I thought he was going to survive, but Kaya double Noah has so much intelligence. Must mm -hmm. have been barely bit enough. Uh, they, they're trying to create space for Luna, but Secret kind of read that situation perfectly, and they also didn't know that the blink was up on the Brewmaster. It's just. Bruce split at this point of the game is so good that it they overcame the rock and it's like I feel like in those type of situations it's a little forced seeing as Seeker wasn't showing on any lanes even specifically bottom it's just very uh, it, if no one's farming out bottom it's just like it's kind of fishy especially since I know I can imagine from their perspective they didn't see many secret heroes well they try to force it there and and does kind of backfire in the sense, especially with Skyra getting that kill. And again, so him dying, not as critical. That Rod of Atos also comes along, so 
pretty much called it. Nakaya, Ron of Atos, top lane, Jonas. Klinks is gonna scout out a little more. Maybe find a better target. The silence comes off though. Necrophos just explodes to Skywrath Mage. Pablo, meanwhile, he got the chain totem off, but it wasn't nearly enough. Mid one gets credit for the kill on him, in fact. He gets a double kill out of this arrow. He'll at least be fine, but yeah, good patience for Ace there as well. Find a better target. <laughs> You know, it's kind of it's kind of funny to think about that because TFT took that bottom tower so quickly, there wasn't an opportunity for them to do that that first play where they smoke down with the entire team, blow a couple ultimates, stagger TPs coming from secret potentially, or just a couple kills. That that's a really nice opportunity for them, but because they went down so early, they're kind of lost as to where they should go. They tried to force down the mid, but in fact, when they went for that mid play. A lot of times it's better to actually bring the majority of your heroes, including the Luna, just just blow the Eclipse for one fight and re return to farming. That would be the safest idea. Yeah. Well, that is the one thing that TFT does really have going for them. Going back to Luna, she has her Mask of Madness. Working on the Dragon Lance. It thinks it's actually the top farm in the game, but Luna shortly behind. Ooh, Sentry's put down the Salt Poppy, who has another Invis Rune, I feel like, that's uh, <laughs> had one not too long ago. But uh, manages to find another one. But he's spotted there. Entries. I do blinks as well. Being placed down. But speaking of the mid tier one tower, Team Secret's the one putting pressure on now. But Luna in the vicinity could head over if they want to defend this. And it looks like they do. They do have Chaotic Offering. Uh, again, Earthshaker doesn't have an initiation tool. He's, he's really unfarmed, unfortunately. But we got mid wars now. It's going to be a stare off. Oh, yeah. We have, but we have Bruce split here. I feel like in order for the rock to be effective, it's going to have to hit three heroes. So as long as they position perfectly, it should be okay. Oh, Warlock caught the Ancient Seal on the swap immediately. No Chaotic Offering as a result. Pablo's locking down Yapsis off to the side, but he's just going to throw out his stun as well. Yonas a fan manages to heal up. He'll be fine for the time being. Skyrath spamming those Arcane Bolts though. Locked down from Brewmaster assisting. Ace throwing in some Searing Arrows, and the Boulder flies through from the Earth Brewling. To finish the job from Fata. So two for nothing. You're talking about maybe Chaotic Offering could be the difference maker. Well, when he silenced it that whole time, not so much. Eclipse activated from Frost. He's going for the turn kill, but Fata, he just goes right into the trees. Gets that efficient. Now he's going to jump back in. Even the Thunderclap now again. He doesn't have a primal split, but he's got plenty of support, including that Earth Splitter put on through the Magic Missile. Already is as well, but here comes the Chaotic Offering. His Warlock is now back up, not the highest level. So he comes up pretty quickly. Skyrath might have over. They did kill Fata. They take out the Skyrath mate. And TFT does manage with a couple of core kills. As far as the return goes, and are they thinking about Roshan, maybe? That would be something. Over here, Necrophos takes out Vengeful with the Reaper side. So three kills all of a sudden for TFT. And that didn't turn out as bad as it felt like it initially was. A lot of that had to do with the fact that the respawn timers are so low. Warlock being able to rejoin the fight with the TP Rock, that completely changes the fight. Secret probably overplaying there. A lot of times when you, when in the early game you get this momentum, you're used to being able to take something off of that, like the objective, quickly and clean up the fight, but because they're responding so quickly, it's just not a good place to fight. It's still good for Secret. They force out a lot of things, a lot of ultimates, so they will be able to take fights on their own pace, and they will have the Bruce split much sooner than any ultimate on TFT, so that's probably going to be the next time they will fight. Is this a game where Luna, does she go the BKB next? Is that like the high priority? Uh, it's not a not an amazing BKB game, but she will need it at some point. Probably the next item, yeah. yeah it's a, it is a tough guy. It's, it's a, not the Skyrath mate, but then you also have a Clinks with Vengeful Enhancement. So it's uh, it is great hybrid here from Secret once again. Ace, speaking of him, Sentry, they spot him. They know he's here. <laughs> Just a matter. In fact, the Creep Wave, Ace will realize that too at the last second. Mm -hmm. Gonna find the opening though. Necro's building towards Pipe. I could can help him a lot into the Skyrath matchup. Probably the better first item overall, just because that's the only way he really dies. But I'd like to see him build a four staff as well, just to protect against the the Mystic Flare from the Skyrath. That helps the team out a lot if that damage doesn't come through, because mid one is a significant amount of damage, and the Mystic Flare is a lot of it as well, huge percentage. Pablo is trying to find that initiation now, and in fact, he is going to go to the Blink Dagger. So we talked about the, on paper, it made sense with the Forest Staff, but it, it seems like that they, they really wanted to just be able to jump in here, get that big Echo Slam off, and get that initiation solid. So 
going for the blink dagger instead and he is getting enough gold right now to where he should have in the next minute or so yeah they really feel like they need that extra power in the team fight because they're not clearly advantaged so this road chance is a huge deal because if clinks can survive through all that burst and ultimates it's gonna be a monster in the fights i also i also want to point out like how different this game is because of the support choice from tft the fact that but like Earthshaker is not really that great of a laning support and we already we already saw what Warlock kind of contributed in the first game uh, it Secret's got a lot of momentum off of this where I feel like uh, uh, it could go completely the other way if if he's able to secure their lanes a bit more but like I think Clink's could have been in poverty mode for example if there was like an ogre up in his face I know it was banned but I'm just giving an example yeah. if there was an ogre up in his face with that I'm necromancer dying, that wouldn't, have been, wouldn't even be close uh, so I'm dying three games yesterday. <laughs> true, but I wouldn't say it's the best first clink because he could easily burst out on dying like, during his decay window. And he's not a strength hero, so he doesn't really care. I'm fine. <laughs> but something I get your point. with a stun. Like, like something that will lane a little bit better, put more pressure overall. Could have been anything, really. TFT smoked up here. Got some vision down. Clinks eventually makes his way out though, and that's, you know, that's why TFT moved up here in the first place. Clinks was pressuring that tier two. You see four heroes up here, and Clinks is now in the middle lane instead. Gonna push this middle tier two tower. And they already used fortification, so they can't stop him in that sense. Warlock is porting in. But again, still plenty of poke damage from Clinks. He almost has an Orchid finished as well, but TFT, they want to make a fight. See, Ace is at half-life. No, he has an Aegis. There's that new Blink from Era showing off the swap. Initially, Ace even slaughtering does it well. I thought Pablo was going to take him out, but he does not. get a Offering eventually comes out, though. Ace will go down. The Aegis is going to bring him back up. Can they make a play with this? Primal Split activated from Fata. He's going to lift up Luna, so she's out of the fight for six seconds. The Earth Splitter does not hit as a result, but they do take out the Dragonite. And now Frostbot right back down, and not much teammate support now. She does have an Eclipse See if she wants to use it, but so many things to hit with that Eclipse probably wouldn't be the best anyways. But it's a triple kill for mid one nonetheless. And Fata, he's hunting for more, but finally TFT, the rest, are able to get out of here. Ace got the support. Oh, and they are going to go Warlock too, most likely. Thunderclap in the face, Hanskin's dead. Well, we, do have, we have Blink on Earthshake here. They were really trying to abuse the the blink dagger timing on the dk but fortunately there is swap and ages so the fight could have went well for them however they were already two behind from the early laning phase this blink Earthshaker, do they do they see it this, they do have echo it, it got nerfed significantly so it won't really kill hero solo he will need follow-up but ideally they just set up a smoke right now and look for some kind of blink echo play yeah try to catch them off guard with that definitely would make sense but Orchid's gonna be delivered to Ace now. In the meantime, he almost has a thousand gold saved up on top of that. We talked about the BKB would be nice for Luna, but uh, all she has is the Ogre Axe and only about a thousand gold saved up herself. So still would like some time as well for that. The pipe almost finished on Necrophos, so feels like a theme here. A lot of almost cases on the dire side. Secret actually has four heroes. He's just gonna push out the bottom lane and Links, he's gonna lead the way. Hunt for another kill. Yeah, See if they can find anybody. They're feeling really confident in these fights. It, I think it's a little bit overconfident because it was so close, even with the Aegis, and they don't have split right now. This is definitely an opportunity for TFT if they want to take it. Scarath going smoke. the Ags. Uh, Luna broke from the smoke, so he's not going to be involved. And they, they get scattered okay. by Yapsor. He does ping it out, he knows. Yeah. You see them just start scattering away now. Not, not fully falling back though, I just want to get in a better position. Get TFT to overextend. The, indec the indecision is what killed them there. They had a really good opportunity if they would just push out that mid lane once they revive and then look for a smoke opportunity. That would have been the key spot right there. No primal split. Can't find it though. Unfortunately, again, we still have not seen the Earthshaker blink though come into play. Waiting for that level 2 Echo Slam now online. You mentioned it was nerfed, but still, it is a nice opener. Dang. I was about to say, I mean, Clinks isn't the beefiest target, but he actually is pretty good right here. He's got even the magic resistance talent at level 10, so he's uh, he's definitely not the easiest kill. You think of Clinks as this fragile hero, but he really isn't. 
That's what, that's what I was saying earlier. With I love the Venge and the Clinks. It's probably the top two best support duos with the, the Clinks overall. It just covers all of his bases. Just that swap. There's there's no way if Puppy's in position that they will actually kill him with their initial burst. Mm -hmm. Oh, that Clinks is going to provide plenty of damage to the tier three. Get the fortification. Era, Ancient Dragon Form's already active. It's not going to be the most duration left, though. However, Secret will just retreat. Again, they're not looking to overcommit. They're just, if anything, getting the response out of TFT, then going back and continuing to choke them out as yep. far as the farm goes. But Luna's finding some decent farm over here, and that BKB is now just about finished, at least. The the sad thing is that the, if the Clinks pops BKB on top of the Luna and gets maybe seven hits, she, she will just die. Even through the BKB, so very, very scary in that matchup. Yeah. What are the levels looking like? Luna is the first one to hit level 15, so she actually gets her Luna Blessing damage as a result of that, but something to keep an eye on. Talents making progress on either side. Elder Titan? <laughs> he went to Vanguard first. Now he's actually going his own BKB. Is the <laughs> App Store. How about that Vanguard, man? Crimson Guard, I guess, eventually. Well, got 2,000 HP. Yeah. That's pretty insane. I mean, it's into a Necro, though, so it's not going to be the most effective. You you will be able to get Reaper Sight down. I guess he just wants to go man mode and just definitely is going to let him do so. I'm just... I'm thinking about this pipe and Veil on the Necro, and I'm just thinking, like, how big Force F would be. Because we... I saw the justification for the Earthshaker as the first item, but they don't have it right now, and... It makes a huge difference in the fights. I feel like the pipe is not really going to save anyone, you know? Like, if, if anything, it will mitigate Elder Titan's ultimate a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's not the problem that they have. They have the, the problem they have is the positioning. Just... I'm not really sold on the, on the item choices. Ooh, Dragon Eye. They're pinging him out. They know exactly where he is somehow. Someone must have spotted him earlier, but he's going to be stopped trying to TP, and Arrow will be picked off. Dead for 50 seconds. Yeah, they saw him sneak in there or something. Because <laughs> Fata jumped exactly right on top of him. Throughout that thunderclap. Sometimes you just pick up on patterns, like... But they might have a word as well, I'm just saying. Like, sometimes you you see how a player plays, and... You know, like, they'll go for those greedier side lane plays where they try to hide. And it's possible that that was the case, but... Either way, TFT, they're at a loss right now. They want this Luna... Ideally, to get to the butterfly, which is a long ways off. That's that's gonna be the point where she can actually find the clinks. But of course, she can itemize her MKB, and that will not be a possibility. So, pretty much the entire game with the advantage on the clinks. As long as they get the next Roshan, the Luna is always gonna be the weaker carry in that matchup. Ace taking out the tier two top tower. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna farm more of the jungle now. Necrophos. That four staff is actually almost finished on him, and we mentioned Earthshaker is still working for us as well. He's been spotted here by Puffy as the sentry's put down. He throw out the fissure though. He does have some backup nearby. Secret committing for this. Pablo gets swapped back in. Now Puppy. He finds Hanskin as a result, so they get the easy kill out of Pablo. And they're gonna also catch Warlock, maybe. Magic missile. Yeah, the Ron of Atos comes out. And the Archie missile to, to finish the job there. Necrophos. He's also caught with the primal split of Fata. Forcing out a ghost shroud. Gonna lift him up. He is pretty deep, though. Elder Titan, the Echo Stamp on top. They bring him down. It was not the best time, though. So he manages to escape, but... Warlock, eh, he's only up in 15 seconds. So not the biggest deal there. In case they pushed. Mm -hmm. Roshan is up, though. Your secret. That's free. There's no... If KFT fights into that, they will... Guarantee lose that fight. Axe finished on Skywrath, by the way, so that means uh, we're going to see that duplicate now, especially with that Mystic Flare. Really powerful. So good. Yeah. The what they could do, Puppy. Sacrificial oh. Lamb, break the smoke. He's going to tank it. They get the Aegis, and Puppy's living, man. That Echo Stop here is, but it's going to be perfectly set oh up on God. four heroes. I mean, there's not any follow-up initiation, but the fact that Puppy even lived is ridiculous. Just... This game is just so sad because I felt like I thought I really believed the TFT recognized the weakness in this vengeful spirit. Just such a bad laning support, really bad. The best thing you can do is really punish that. But I'm just looking at it from the perspective of the 
to shake her and hand skin, you know. Radiance last game it was just almighty Chen. He could go anywhere he wanted, push all the towers. He's so strong. At this game, he's just struggling to find a position where his rock will have really good impact, and he's also being focused fired down. It's a very rough warlock game. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was uh, where was that? That was top lane. Oh, Fork and nullifier. There's nothing. You oh, can do. nullifier now. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, literally no response from Necropost, especially at that point. Well, missed uh, on camera, but you can pretty much guess what happened very quickly. Brewmaster bottom lane, the Clips is used, it's hitting a lot of creeps, so it's <laughs> finally going on to Brewmaster. We'll get the kill, but at what cost now? Echo Stomp coming out, Chaotic Offering going to be thrown out, though, from Hanskin. Pablo, yeah. blink in six more seconds, swapping a Hanskin. Puppy's going the other way. He's going to make them chase him, if anything. And once again, he may still survive. Ace TP's in. So they do have Clinks here as well. Got a coffrey. <laughs> He's in the nullifier on it. Wants that kill, man. Wants that bounty. Not gonna get it though. So still no echo slam from Pablo. It has just has not found the angle. Yeah, part of the it. part of the playstyle of the Earthshaker is you you want to have that movement speed, like I, at least a wind lace or something. Sometimes you have tranquils and it helps you set up for that blink dagger. Another option that Yapsor actually popularized is. He goes for the Aether Lens, which gives you that little bit extra range on your Blink Dagger, and actually makes a huge deal. But right now, just Brown Boots solely, it's very hard to capitalize on those opportunities, and even, you know, his Blink was cancelled that last fight, because he did use it to secure the Fissure on the Brewmaster. Frost has been a little bit indecisive, as by the way, Ace, even as an Arcane Rune. He opens up, watches Necrophos oh Melody. Hanskin's like, hey, take a Shadow Word. Yeah, that's not gonna help him there. Slowly healing over time will not do it against the claims like that. Necro's down for 40 seconds, but I was gonna go back to Luna. She actually had a butterfly then queued up a little bit there for a second, but now she's gone back to the Asha and she is committed towards the Manta style. So you talked about how important that butterfly will be, but that's gonna even be more delayed now because of the Manta choice instead. As he's found. Uh oh. Brewmaster, Primal Split, he's forcing out a BKB. At least he also has Puppy coming in. Swap is ready to go. Oh. He's got that swap, so the second he tries to maybe make a play, I mean, he has a TP, but obviously he can't do it just yet. He's going to keep on running. Ace gets a pick on Pablo. Meanwhile, they're pushing into the base, by the way. Hanskin also goes down, so Frost is on the run. Back over to the middle base, though. The Tier 3 tower is also in trouble. Ace, he makes his way out, getting about half-life, so Frost does make the escape at the top lane somehow. A little too fast, but back to the middle lane. Ancient Dragon for him. No fires put up. Clint doing so much damage to Dragonite. And will finish the job. Skyrath Mage is picked oh, off, however. By the Reaper Scythe. The Yonas have fan. And now Ace is in trouble. That will mean Aegis? No, he manages to live. Death Bolt's out of range. How the hell did Frost get out of there? Oh my god. I don't know. <laughs> I guess sure that Yasha bomb. He, he couldn't TP because he would just get swapped and somehow juke them through the. The threes on the left, probably because there was so much pandemonium going on. All the players are probably the comms are really like you know, a lot of people talking at the same time. It's hard to coordinate. Mm -hmm. But uh, he just jumps in. He has the cheese as well. The aggressive swap on a Necrophos once again. The Nofar comes out and. And he's just absolutely melts him. He buys back immediately though. Frost coming in with that Eclipse. Fonte eats the cheese. He's taking so much of that. Ace is still alive. He does have an Aegis, so he's just going to stay in his ground, actually, despite the chaotic offer. And the Echo Slam oh. finally comes out, and that was not the most ideal Echo Slam. A little greedy. He went for the Enchant Totem first. He would have landed that Echo Slam 100%, but it, it was on an Aegis. It's interesting. Yeah. I really like the, the combination that Seeker did. They, okay, first of all. Oh my god, he's dead necro. Necro, he just hunts this <laughs> necrophos apparently. The swap into nullifier, like you pre click the nullifier, orchid, swap into it directly. There's almost nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. You have to react extremely fast, but it's not like he had any tools anyway, so I really like that coordination. Such a strong combo. Link said Aegis, gonna be respawning very shortly here, but you know, as a full bloodthorn. And it doesn't really feel like, I mean, he's, again, he's been uh, scared a couple of times, but there you go, as it is, take it away, puts the ring back, though, back in his inventory. Doesn't seem like that's going to deter a secret, though, from continuing to push, however. Mid one, he's leading the way bottom lane, Ace. 
He'll activate the Death Pact on a Siege Creep and he'll just beat down that Tier 3 tower. Arrow jumps in. As Dragonite pops his BKB, so the Mystic Flare won't kill him necessarily. Frost on the backline is dealing with the primal split of oh Brewmaster, God. and Brewmaster actually might die right here. He will go down, in fact. Frost just simply right clicked him down. Dragonite was picked off as well, though. Hanskin throws out the dust. Puppy having to run off to the left. Beto Bonds helping to take him down a little bit. Pablo throws out the Fissure now, trying to stop Clinks as much as possible. Tier 3, of course, dead. Notice the fan is back into the fight, so he has a reaper side. They get the catch of Luna, though, with the Mystic Flare, and they get the kill. She buys back immediately. Pablo's also dead. Ace just cannot be touched, apparently. He just takes out the racks. Here at the bottom, that's the second set of racks. Now he's going for Luna. Luna has to run back to the fountain. She does not have a buyback. Of course, Necrophos, he's also in trouble. He's going to get caught with no buyback. Ghost Shroud, that's not going to save him in the long run. He's dead for 50 Holy more seconds, crap. so. Ricky, did they're going to go for tier four. You know, happens. you know, Strafe dodges projectiles, right? He dodged Dragon Tail. Oh, did he? <laughs> he literally okay. dodged Dragon Tail with Strafe, and then Arrow's like, wait, what? And then he just got turned on. <laughs> oh my god. Well, making some big plays. GG's are called. Game three will go the way of Secret, so TFT, they put up a hell of a fight yeah. here in this three game series, obviously forcing the third game even, but ultimately, Team Secret victorious and advancing on into the winner's side. So, TFT again, still in it. Ultimately, no one gets eliminated here in the group stage. It's just a matter of where you place going into the main event. But look forward to seeing how both teams continue to progress here. But, uh, yeah, game three of the series, ultimately going the way of Seeker. What do you think, Fluff? I just, I felt like the supports of TFT didn't really match up to the power of the last game, and that was the big.